Hello guys, that's the iPad Air 5. So after spending about a month with it, I decided it's high time to make this short and uh, interesting, hopefully for you video for top five things you need to know about the Apple iPad Air 5 tablet. So without further ado, let's move on straight to the point. The first thing is about the storage. That's how the iPad works like, that's the blue one and that's the 64 gigs iPad Air 5. Most of the videos, the other videos that you would watch on YouTube, if you haven't watched them already, would recommend that you don't get the 64 gigs of the Apple iPad Air 5 and instead go with the bigger storage option, which is more expensive. Then they go on, they go forward saying that if you get with the more expensive, bigger storage iPad Air 5, then you are better off if you get the iPad Pro instead of the iPad Air. Now, the price difference would be little enough, but if you don't need huge apps, huge games, if you know well enough how and why you're going to use your iPad just as I do, if you know exactly what tasks you'd like to uh, do on your tablet, then the 64 gigs of the iPad Air 5 is the most economical, but at the same time, the best choice for you. That's why I went with the Air 5, the 64 gigs. So don't fall in that trap. Now point number two, it's about the keyboard. That's big and chunky tablet. That's 11.9 inches. That's how it works like, by the way, from all six sides. So if it's big for you and it's really big, I mean, it's hard to type while holding it like that with two hands you can just do this trick. By the way, that's the Microsoft uh, Swift key keyboard, which I highly recommend. But for this one, we need the default Apple keyboard. If you just slide inward your fingers, just like that, you'd make your keyboard smaller. It will move to one of the corners and you can type whatever you want. Now, if you, make, if you want to make it big again, you just slide outwards inwards, outwards, and that's how you switch between the little and bigger keyboard. This point number three is about speakers. The iPad Air gets just two speakers here and here on the opposite side of the power button, unlike the Apple iPad Pro, which gets four speakers. Here you get only two of them. They're located here, so if you are playing a game or watching a YouTube video or watching something on Netflix or whatever multimedia thing you want to do, you keep your hands exactly on the speaker. So the volume is a bit muffled and it's not uh, top quality. Of course, uh, you can rotate your tablet and hold it like that, but now you risk pushing, pressing the power button when you don't want to do so and you can send your tablet to sleep. So keep in mind that thing about the speaker's positioning, guys. Now, next thing, and that's Tip number five, it's again about the multimedia multitasking to be more precise. Apple devices aren't so popular with multitasking, but if you want to do, you can do so. If you are in YouTube and you want to browse the App Store, you can just slide out the App Store on one of the corners of the screen and you can use both apps at the same time. You can toggle the mode, you can toggle the position where each of them appears and in that way, you can easily enough and conveniently enough use the multitasking feature on your iPad. And finally, tip or point number five, if you have a MacBook and uh, iPad or you have iMac or whatever, Apple computer and iPad, you can use your iPad as a secondary or even main screen for your computer. How you do so? First thing, of course, you need to connect both devices with the same Apple ID and of course connect both devices with the, separate, with the same wireless Wi-Fi network. On your computer, you go to settings, you go to displays and you don't need to do anything on your iPad other than connecting it to the Wi-Fi network. Here on that menu, at display, you choose your iPad and give it a couple of seconds for the MacBook screen to blink and voila, we are connected. Now you can use your tablet, your iPad as a normal secondary screen. You can position it wherever you want. Of course, the touch interface doesn't work, but you can easily enough use your mouse. You can move the cursor between both screens and you can just use your 
uh, MacBook or iMac interface and infrastructure exactly as you would do on a separate normal monitor. And if you want to disconnect your secondary screen, your tablet from your computer, you go here, right click and click disconnect. And here we go back to the normal built-in display of your MacBook Air. That was the video guys, if you liked it, click the thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, smash that subscribe button and share with your friends. Thanks for watching and bye bye.